wasn't what I asked. What I asked was that the statements were not clear enough without the po the additions by the same. No, I'm not saying that. I'm, sa really aren't I'm, I'm saying that that I can prove it without citing any saint, but citing the saints adds adds something for those who respect their opinions or for those who want more analysis of how that applies to different situations and discussions of the history of the issue, the angles on that issue, how it's been shown in church history, etc. But you do, all I need is Eugene the Fourth. Okay. All right, so again, they're not really needed. They're just sort of extra decoration. They're not, they're, not, they're not absolutely necessary to prove the point, no. Okay, so they're not necessary at all. There's no absolutes with necessary. To prove the point that a heretic can't be pope. Not necessary. How many times do I have to answer the question? Excellent. Well, I didn't hear it yet. yet. Okay. okay. Now, you, you state this is an ancient teaching of the church. Do you know when it was... As far as you're concerned, the first reference to it? The, the first reference to the fact that you're not in communion with heretics goes back to the very beginning of the church, that you must avoid a heretic, St. Paul said. Can I, can I finish? Titus 3.10. Okay. You must avoid a heretic after the second rebuke. Okay? And so if anyone refuses to hear the church, let him be, that's uh, in Matthew 18.17, if anyone refuses to hear the church, let him be to thee as the heathen. And so if someone refuses the church, refuses church teaching, he is to be considered as outside, separate, the heretic, the heathen. He's not to be considered your head, your leader, your pope. That is repugnant to Catholic faith. It's repugnant to the unity of the faith and Christianity in general. Does he become a heretic after he's rejected from the church or when he commits the sin? When he denies the teaching of the church, he commits mortal sin and becomes a heretic at that very moment and ceases to be Catholic. Okay. And so therefore, when our Lord in the Gospel of St. Matthew is telling people to confront them one at a time, he's already out of the church? When our Lord in the Gospel of Matthew is telling what people to confront whom? You said if a, I think you were referring to... Oh, the, you mean Matthew 18.17? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, he's saying that He's already out of the church before he's confronted. No, if he refuses to submit to the church, he is outside the church. I understand. But these people who are confronting him with his heresy, he's still in the church even though he's committed heresy? If a person has rejected the teaching of the church, he's not in the church. If he Before he's rejected the teaching of the church, he is in the church. Let's try it again, and, and maybe I get a yes or no answer this time. Before he's confronted it, but after he's committed the sin, is he still in the church? No. So he's already outside the church? By the fact that you said he committed the sin, which means he rejects the teaching of the church. He's not in the church. Already he's... outside the church? Yes. When you reject the teaching of the church, you're outside the church. Okay. So when our Lord says the third time you talk to him and then have uh, reject him, that's simply confirming something that already happened, correct? Well, St. Paul's the one who says it. He says it in Titus 3.10. He says after the second rebuke, because that also entails whether you should avoid them. I understand. If, but before the second rebuke, say, between the sin and the first rebuke, he's already out of the church? If he clearly rejected the teaching of the church, absolutely. Well, whatever St. Paul is referring to, you, you brought it up. Whatever he's referring to. I answered your question. You said before he has been rebuked by someone else, if he rejects the teaching of the church, he's outside the church. I, keep, I didn't say rejecting teachings of the church. You keep saying that. I'd like you to answer the question the way I phrased it. I answered the question. All right, let's try it again. If he commits a sin, whatever it is, and he's not yet rebuked, is he already outside the church? Not if he commits any sin. It has to be heresy, schism, or apostasy. Does it say heresy, schism, or apostasy in those two passages? No, it doesn't. So you're reading into it? No, but as Catholics, we're not, we don't believe in sola scriptura. We believe... I yeah, we, and Pope Pius XII and a host of other magisterial pronouncements teach us no. the real... Can I finish? Can I answer your question? It, they teach us the real meaning of those passages, which is that people are not severed from the church for fornication. Okay, they're not severed from the church for other sins of immorality. That puts them in a state of mortal sin. Okay, but they're severed from the church for heresy, schism, or apostasy. Those passages doesn't, do not say heresy, schism, or apostasy, do they? No, they don't. You're arguing... Oh, actually, Titus 3.10 says heretic. Okay. 
Uh, hi, is that the one that you mentioned about rebuking twice? He says, uh, avoid the heretic after the second rebuke. Okay. Um, but before that second rebuke, even before the first, is the man outside the church? If if he does what? What do you mean? He, is he outside the church if he does what? Whatever it is that they're rebuking him about. Yes. Okay. And the same thing with the with the guy in uh, Matthew 18? <sighs> Right, because we're talking about someone who refuses to hear the church. Um, and so it's pretty obvious, but I mean, like, this I guess, is... I guess, I guess I'm not making myself clear. No, you, you, you are, but you're just, you're trying to refute it, and you can't, because it's Catholic teaching, and truth is irrefutable. And so the bottom line is, there there's some other things that um, I wanted to ask you, okay. since you just asked me. I didn't get an answer on this, so go ahead. You didn't get an answer on it? No. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Well, that's a lie. Okay. <laughs> uh, can someone be a Catholic if one respects a diabolical religion? I, I, I have always a problem with the word respect, so I'd ask you to either substitute or to define it. That means to show esteem or approval for. Okay, now, good, now I understand what you mean. What was the question again? Can someone be a Catholic if he respects, a.k.a., shows esteem or approval for a diabolical religion? Yeah, he does it. Yeah, sure. So you can you can be a Catholic if you you esteem. You think it's uh, approvable. It's it's something that's worthy of being approved. Something that's worthy of esteem. A diabolical religion. Oh, of course not. Well, you just contradicted yourself. You simply asked me a question: Can you be a Catholic and commit a sin? Of course you can. Even if you, even if it's a sin where you respect a religion that's diabolical. Absolutely, there's only one unforgivable sin, <laughs> and even that doesn't. Put well, it. it all comes down to the fact that you do not accept Catholic teaching on heretics losing membership in the church. That's really uh, a fact. I mean, that's just you do not accept that. And so, how are you any different from the Protestants who, or the Eastern Orthodox who reject Vatican I and the papacy? When you reject, you know, Pope Eugene the Fourth and Pope Innocent the Third and Pope Leo the Thirteenth and Pope Pius XII, and the consistent teaching of the Church for two thousand years that heretics are outside the Church, how, how are you any different from the Protestants? Well, I'm different from the Protestants in many ways. We disagree on this particular issue. But from the standpoint of the fact that you reject Catholic dogma, would you admit that you do reject Catholic dogma? No, of course not. Uh, okay, would you? Is it a Catholic dogma that heretics cease to be Catholic? No, not in my opinion. So, what does it mean? What does Pope Eugene the Fourth mean when he says that all heretics are outside the church? I say all heretics. This is a, this is an extremely. If you're dealing with a concept of universal, and the, the, and, a, and a synonym for universal is not there, you cannot make the case. If I say thieves go to jail, I don't mean all thieves go to jail. And if I say thieves go to all jails, I don't mean that every jail has a thief in it. I mean, I, that's what I'm saying, but I would be wrong. If I say all thieves go to all jails, I would be wrong too. If I said, however, in general, thieves, when they're caught, are sentenced to jail, I'm making a general statement of a principle of punishment. Right, let me ask you this. Yeah, go ahead. What does Pope Eugene the Fourth mean? Uh, have you read the Bulk and Top the Domino? I'm sure I have, but uh, and I, it sounded it, familiar to me when you read it. The Holy Roman Church firmly believes, professes, and preaches yes. that all those who are outside the Catholic Church, not only pagans, but also Jews or heretics and schismatics, cannot share an eternal life. I agree. So you agree that heretics are outside the church? Oh, I agree. Heretics cannot share an eternal life. But it, and it says that they cannot be saved as heretics. And it says that they are what outside the church. That's your reading of it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, and is the church of heretics? Would you agree with this? By the heart, we Pope is the third profession of faith. Twelve o eight. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I didn't hear what you said. Please repeat it. Okay. Pope Innocent the Third, Profession of Faith, 1208. By the heart we believe and by the mouth we confess the one church, not of heretics, but the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So is the church of heretics or not? No, of course not. So that means what? The heretics are not in the church? No. Well, I mean, that's just ridiculous. Again. It says the church not of heretics. I understand that. What does that mean, Vin? 
It means that the faith and the practice of church is not determined by heretics. In the same sense that laws, as I've argued against the laws that homosexuals advocate, laws should not be written by perverts. However, I'm sure there's perverts who are writing laws right now. Well, but you actually believe that the faith and the practice of the church is determined by a heretic, Benedict the Sixteenth. Oh no, of course not. Either, even if he were, so he's not a heretic. Wait a minute. First of all, I don't know whether he's a heretic or not. As I pointed out before, and as I'll repeat again, there is not valid, believable evidence. There is circumstantial evidence. There are suspicions. My argument remains the same. It is a matter of justice when we're attacking someone's good name or even someone's bad name to have proof beyond mere suspicion, confirmation, rumor, and uh, shall we say self-fulfilling prophecy. 